Every living person has a shadow, unless an individual is aware of it. More the shadow will run his life. Famous psychologist Carl Jung said, Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will run your life and you will call it destiny. Now, you maybe are aware of your insecurities. With the awareness of it, you have good chance of correcting it. But if the ego doesn't allow you to see your insecurities, if it pushes the unwanted aspects deeper into the unconscious, you risk leaving it suppressed. This wouldn't be such a problem if the unconscious aspects wouldn't suddenly surface up in the moment of unawareness, only to wreak havoc on individuals' life and actions. You may have heard of those among us, usually described as nice and calm people, until they did something horrific nobody ever saw coming. Carl Jung split shadow work into two types. First one is the personal shadow, which is associated to the unknown dark side of our own personality. And then there is the collective shadow work, which represents the unknown dark side of society. Jung refers to the personal shadow as the thing a person has no wish to be. The personal shadow is associated with the ego representing its unknown or little known attributes and qualities. In our shadow lies the sum of all those unpleasant qualities we tend to hide from ourselves and others. Deep within our shadow are confined inferiorities and beliefs everybody has, but prefers not to know about. Everyone has a dark side, yet very few people are willing or able to embrace the image of seeming weak, socially unacceptable, or even evil. The shadow is more likely to rise to the surface when one is overwhelmed by anxiety or other emotions such as rage and depression, which have been denied and suppressed for too long. The influence of substances such as alcohol are also the common trigger for contents of a personal shadow to emerge as the inhibitions of a conscious conditioned mind are brought down. That's why an individual may suddenly blurt out an insulting remark during a friendly chat. The more we refuse to embrace what we despise, the more our unconscious projects it unto others. The modern trends of relentless positivity have brought on a spiritual toxic trait, resulting in even further dissociation from the shadow self and with many more people suppressing and invalidating their difficult emotions. That's why so many people are ashamed to recognize their shadow traits up to a point that the ego is no longer aware of shadow behavior and thus has no possibility of commanding it. In such environment, the shadow becomes autonomous and may express itself in inexplicable moods such as irritability and cruelty. In his writings, Jung emphasizes the importance of developing shadow awareness and its projections in the individual's life. Although the shadow is commonly seen as negative, it is a myth as the shadow holds a lot of positive aspects like joy, creativity, and even sexuality. In fact, shadow work also gives us insight to positive qualities we possess but are unaware of. Jung explained that the shadow displays a number of good qualities such as normal instincts, appropriate reactions, realistic insights, creative impulses, just to name a few. Our shadow by rule holds the good and the bad qualities, both of which we are unaware of. Jung's closest collaborator, Marie-Louise von Franz, said, the shadow is not necessarily always an opponent. In fact, he is exactly like any human being with whom one has to get along, sometimes by giving in, sometimes by resisting, sometimes by giving love. Whatever the situation requires, the shadow becomes hostile only when he is ignored or misunderstood. The shadow is an amalgam of all sorts of qualities, strengths, and potentials which if remain unconscious produce a state of deprivation in our personality, creating unconscious strongholds which inhibit the growth and embodiment of these positive qualities that lie hidden in our psyche. For example, someone might believe that if they're being assertive, that they're actually being aggressive or rude. This will result in them having no capacity to speak up for themselves, dissolving them of honesty and confidence, which will then lead to less proactivity inability to meet one's needs, financial struggles, being taken advantage of, inability to say no, and many other. So when a person like this meets an assertive person, they will feel resentment and guilt. This will make the shadow even more suppressed because of ego's pride. For the assertiveness to integrate into our life experience, 
the ego will need to give up its pride and recognize that which we deny ourselves. Another window of opportunity to recognize our shadow is through our dreams, embodying the role of the same sex as the dreamer. In dreams we meet an unfiltered critic of our unconscious character. It will judge us until embarrassment comes to surface. We must explore the contents of shadow and integrate it into our life experience. This is what the shadow work entails in order to attain wholeness. And for this quest, we embark on a self-exploration journey that begins with education. This education is meant to equip us with knowledge and resources necessary for the integration of the unconscious. One must enter long and dreadful conversations with the shadow, which takes a lot of courage. Shadow work involves different practices, and one of the most powerful ones is through observing the shadow outwardly through emotional reactions and radical honesty about the nature of interactions with others, and inwardly through investigating the dreams and observing our thoughts and motives. By doing so, the shadow becomes heard, which results in reducing the destructive potential of it. Common mistake people make is going into a waging war against the darkness of their shadow, when in reality it is bringing light to the darkness without judgment, that which brings one to the wholeness of their being. Carl Jung wrote, There is no light without shadow and no psychic wholeness without imperfection. War against the shadow is perfectionism, and one shouldn't strive to be perfect rather to be whole. Carl Jung said, I would rather be whole than good. Such a goal is a lifelong process that results in balance between the conscious and the unconscious aspects of the psyche, aligning the ego to the self of a man, the totality of one's personality. Such path can be scary and dark, but realizing the truth sets one free. Figuring out the truth is the process of authenticity and it requires a thorough and painful excavation of the deepest aspects of our being where we must explore our possibilities as well as limitations, abilities, skills, distortions, suppressed, and long-forgotten parts of the self. However, this path is truly a road less taken as most people are too indifferent to even contemplate on their conscious moral aspects, let alone to consider how their shadow behavior affects their life. Collective Shadow The shadow can also hold factors that stem beyond one's personal life. This is where we stumble upon the collective shadow, the dark or the unknown side of a society as a whole. The shadow of a society can be anything that opposes our shared values as a group. Collective shadow is a complex, multidimensional, and often horrifying aspect of human life containing the multigenerational monstrosity and harm inflicted by and upon humans and other layers of the natural world. Collective shadow is mostly projected into life experience through darkness, inferiority, violence, oppression, indolence for the suffering in the world and denial of responsibility. Collective shadow is brutally acted out in wars, genocides, and massacres, but where we mostly see it today is delivered through covert altruistic and missionary activities, such as mandating different restrictions and guilting masses into coercion and obedience. The collective shadow is manifested outwardly through physical suffering, sickness, poverty, atrocities, persecution, crime, the death of cultures, and so on, but will also manifest inwardly as hatred toward oneself, one's culture, depression, feelings of impotence, desire for revenge as a covert desire for others to experience and understand one's own pain, and many more. What people historically labeled as evil is actually a manifestation of the collective shadow. Christians call it the devil, and the way it is described is that someone can be possessed by it, lose his human instinct, and therefore develop a demonic nature. According to Carl Jung, our response to evil must be the quest for self-knowledge and wholeness, which entails the integration of the shadow aspects. The individual must relentlessly know how much good he can do, and what crimes he is capable of. When a societal issue arises, it can be labeled as a shadow issue if it holds evidence of projection, denial, and lack of responsibility of the individual, as well as the collective. It is then particularly crucial to take moral, political, and spiritual responsibility. When we have courage to deal with our darkness, it saves us and others from having to deal with the consequences of it. 
especially when it comes to massive suffering like wars, holocausts, and oppressions as the effects of it persist for generations. Human species is very young in this regard and usually deals with this in ways that are harmful long term, like going into denial, motivated by desire to get on with things and put the past behind. During our history, there have been many times when we as a collective try to deal with difficult past through public apologies, repentance, pilgrimage to the places of genocides and great suffering. But is there a deeper, more effective way of integrating the shadow within a population rather than masking it with a symbolic apology of our leaders? Remembering and talking about painful past is a difficult process for everyone involved, for victims as well as the perpetrators and witnesses. And it is only considered successful and complete once the suffering, pain, betrayal, outrage, and all the other feelings have been voiced and responsibility has been taken. The only way to deal with a difficult past is voicing the truth. Shadows are hard to detect until they wreak havoc, and this is because they cause mass psychosis represented by the collective shadow. One example of this is Nazi Germany, where people were blinded by their personal shadow and fell into the demonic nature. They did things that under normal circumstances they couldn't even imagine. If an individual doesn't deal with their own shadow, they risk of falling prey and being used by the collective shadow for evil purposes. Therefore, it is of prime importance to solve one's inner conflicts so one is not unconsciously manipulated. This individual can then later on influence others and bring about a change in society as a whole. See, the war is inside of us and inside of everyone. Everything is ready to explode and we are all co-responsible. Summary. We must be ready to acknowledge our personal shadow and hold long and difficult negotiations with it if we want to avoid becoming victims of our unconscious projections. The shadow holds a lot of good qualities and becoming aware of them can help us integrate them and improve the quality of our life. By reconciling our inner conflicts, we become aware of the collective shadow, which makes us wiser so we don't fall prey to it. While at the same time, it provides the space for responsibility in addressing the denial of shadow issues, as well as the lack of initiative in individuals, as well as the collective. Remember, the courage to deal with your own inner conflicts brings relief to others. Because telling the truth is the only way to avoid the collective shadow to grow so big, the history ends up repeating itself. I hope you enjoyed this video on the shadow. You can support the channel on PayPal or by liking, commenting, and sharing the content. Thank you for watching.